What's going on everyone? So in the last few videos we've actually been talking about Foundry Virtual Tabletop and how to create maps in the system, how to do dynamic lighting, but now we need some monsters for our players to fight against. So that's what we're going to do today. We're actually going to figure out how to actually take monsters in from the compendium packs that are inherent within the Foundry Virtual Tabletop system like Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and the SRD, and that's actually what I'm going to use today for this example. But keep in mind that this is applicable across all different game systems that have a standard rules or a compendium uh, basic rules document that actually has monsters in it, so keep that in mind. Also, we're going to learn how to create our own custom monsters and custom NPCs so that way we can actually create our homebrew worlds the way we want them to be and we can create our own custom monsters and stuff like that to put into our games. Now if you guys do have any questions as we're going through this make sure you leave a comment down there in the comment section but also come down to the live stream. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Twitch. Link for that Twitch stream down in the description below. There we talk about Dungeons and Dragons, virtual tabletops, anything tabletop role playing and I'm there really to actually be a resource for you guys and answer your questions. So if you guys have any questions about how to be a dungeon master, how to be a game master, what it means to be a player, etc, etc. If you guys have any questions about the system or anything like that, let me know and I will be more than happy to answer those questions in that live stream. Also, if you end up enjoying this video and you kind of want to know more about Foundry Virtual Tabletop, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because there'll be definitely more videos coming out on Foundry Virtual Tabletop in the near future. Now, without further ado, let's actually jump into this video because I've talked long enough. All right, guys, so now that we're here at the computer, let's actually jump into Foundry Virtual Tabletop. All right, so as you can see here, I'm actually in my Souls Vault map that we kind of created back in the last video, and I'll leave a link for that up there somewhere. But today we're actually gonna jump into how to take some monsters in from compendium packs and stuff like that here. And so what we're gonna do is, I actually created some folders for my different things. So I've got my player characters, I got Jeffrey the Barbarian, he's on the map as well, but I have him in there. And then we also have a tab for major NPCs, I haven't added anything in there yet, and then we got a tab for monsters. So the easiest way to do that is actually just create a folder, you can give it a folder name, we'll just call it name. And then you can see it populates a folder and you can nest some of your monsters in there but we're just gonna remove this folder now i don't need that one i've already created enough for myself now the way we're going to import monsters in from the compendium is actually very simple so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our compendium packs and that's actually going to show us anything that we have in here and then we actually have the monsters from the srd from dungeons and dragons fifth edition now i'm going to come back to my actors tab and let's say I want to add this acolyte into my monsters tab all i have to do is i actually need to click on it hit import it's going to bring the acolyte in and then i can actually drag and drop it into my monster so now you can see that he's nested down there in the monsters tab let's say if we want to add another one let's add this axe beak so what we're going to do is we're going to click on it we're going to import it and it brings the axe beak in here and we can actually add that in there as well the other thing you can do if you don't want to click on this if say you don't want to check out any of the stats or anything like that what you can do is you can actually click on whatever monster you have here so let's take the bandit all you have to do is just drag and drop them in and you can actually put them right in your folder that way as well i just like to look at them first and then import them and you can see that they have their own token you can actually click on the prototype token it'll always show what it is you can see what the image is and the file that it's taking it from you can see what the height and width of the grid is if you need to change anything maybe this bandit grows in size for whatever the case may be maybe it gets an enlarged spell you can change it there uh, you can also change the position on it. if it's already on the map you can give it vision and stuff like that if you want to give it vision etc etc and then you can actually show what kind of attributes you want to show so in my case i've got the uh, hp turned on in this case but that's what it's going to default whenever you bring something over so that's actually really easy then you can bring this bandit onto the field and you can see him there now and now he's actually an actionable token we click on him we can bring up his uh, different things we can bring up his features we can actually click on his scimitar and say we want to attack somebody we can do that we can roll normal and then it's going to give us a roll there so easy enough so that's one way you can actually bring monsters in from compendium packs within the software now i'm in this the uh, dungeons and dragons fifth edition rule set in here and so that's why i've got the srd locked in here but the easiest way to do that is actually to bring in any of those other um, rule sets that I kind of showed you in the first video that we did a tutorial on for uh, character building. And I'll put a link down in the description below. But um, there's actually a way you can actually upload your own Pathfinder, stuff like that. And it'll actually bring in some of these monsters as well. So that's pretty easy. The next thing we're going to do is let's say we want to make an NPC. So we'll say it's a major NPC. Let's say it's the big bad evil guy. And that's what I'm going to call him. So we're going to click plus on the folder tab here. Or you can actually just create an actor and draw it in and drop it in, but that's fine. I'm just gonna call him BBEG because that'll make our lives a little bit easier. And it's gonna be an NPC, so we're gonna create this actor. So now we can actually play around with what kind of way we wanna homebrew this monster. So let's say it's a CR20 monster, sure. And what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna automatically change if there's a proficiency bonus or anything like that within the different compendium or the different rule set that you're playing, it's gonna change stuff. So when we make it a CR20, it's actually gonna change his proficiency bonus to plus six. So Depending on your game system, this might be different, but in the Dungeons & Dragons CR or challenge level, uh, different system here that we have here in D&D, 
that's what it does. And then we can also make whatever type of creature it is. We can say it's a humanoid. We can say it's a chaotic evil source. If you have a source, like say if you get it from any of the modules or something like that within D&D, you can do that. Um, I'm just gonna say it's homebrew because that's what it is for this case. Then we can also change its different attributes. We can change this to a 16 or an 18. We can change this to a five. We can do whatever we want and we'll just leave the rest as tens. It works very similarly to the character sheet that you have for your player characters, but it's got a little bit different stuff when we move on from here. And I'll show you that here in a second, but we can say it's proficient in intimidation, arcana, performance. And you can see that we're adding our proficiency bonus in this case within this system here. We can also change the guy's health. We can give him 500 health, sure, whatever. Uh, we can give him a ton of health. Uh, we can make his armor class 22. We can make his speed 75 feet, sure. Wh whatever the case may be. Um, you can also add your legendary actions if you have that for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition or um, some different systems have similar kind of actions as well. Um, that's up to you how you wanna do that. You can also give him layer actions and then give him when that layer action happens on initiative count 20. So we can do that, we can change the size, languages, you get the idea. So it works very similar to a regular player character. We come into features, we can add in the different uh, things from the compendium for different attacks. So if we come into items, let's say we want to add, let's say if we want to add a sword, um, let's just, yeah, let's give him the flame tongue greatsword. So now he has an attack action in here, we can click on it, it'll populate in here. We can roll for our attack normal he rolled a 16 to hit that probably hits somebody and then we can roll our damage um and we'll just say it's a normal damage so you can see the kind of it's 2d6 for this great sword in this case plus four um for this particular um great sword so easy enough there we can also add different actions and features so let's say if he has some uh features from whether it be custom ones we can add in our own or we can actually uh or different features actions and inventory or we can actually bring some in from the different classes. Um, so let's say if he, let's say he's got some levels in um, fighter or yeah, let's say levels in fighter. So we can bring an action surge, it adds action surge for us. So that's kind of cool. So you can create some of your NPCs to actually be different classes and stuff like that within the game, or you can just completely homebrew. That's up to you as well. If he has a spell book, we can actually add spells. So let's say he's got acid arrow, he's got acid splash, we can, animate dead so you get the idea so it, it all kind of works you can drag and drop everything from the srds or you can create your own by just simply clicking add and you can create your own spells or whatever the case may be and then we have our biography where we can make some notes about this character for our np for our player characters kind of interact with and that's basically how you can create your own custom monster or your own custom npc so the reason why i put him into my major npcs is because Maybe this big baggy evil guy is not overtly known as being evil. Maybe eventually, I mean, with a name like BBEG, it's probably pretty obvious, but uh, let's say the guy's name is like Jimmy or Frank or something like that, and the characters don't know what he is, but you know, you can nest him in here because um, he's not necessarily just going to be a straight up monster unless some of these other, like these bandits end up becoming major NPCs. But um, say if this is a big named kind of character that you want to kind of um, have some notes and some backstory as opposed to just some of these monsters that are literally just monsters like this is just an axe beak doesn't have a backstory i mean you can give it one but uh in this case for the most part it's just going to be acting as a monster and not an npc so that's basically it to actually creating your own monsters and also bring in monsters from the compendiums here in foundry virtual tabletop and that, ladies and gentlemen, is actually gonna end this video on how to make your own custom monsters, but also how to bring monsters in from compendium packs within the Foundry Virtual Tabletop software. Now, I'm sure you guys have some questions. Make sure you leave comments down in the comment section. I'll be sure to look at those and make sure I'm answering them to the best of my ability. But also make sure you come down to the live stream. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Twitch. Link for that Twitch stream down in the description below. There we'll talk about Dungeons and Dragons, Foundry Virtual Tabletop, anything related to tabletop role playing, how to be a good GM, DM, how to become a better player character, role playing, whatever the case may be. Any questions that you guys actually have i'm there as a resource for you so feel free to come down there and ask anything that you're just kind of uh, worrying you in your mind as you're kind of moving forward because i want to make sure that i'm breaking down as many barriers for you guys so that we can enjoy the tabletop role playing space uh, if you also ended up liking this video and you made it to the end make sure you give it a like subscribe and hit that notification bell for the channel so that way you know when more of these foundry virtual tabletop tutorials or any other tutorials related to tabletop role playing even dungeons and dragons which is what i play in my games comes out for the channel now i hope you guys learned something today and until next time Happy gaming.